LJN, the rainbow of doom. Most people despise the company and their supposedly crappy games, but I actually enjoy them, and that's why I now don the moniker of the LJN Defender! Alright everyone, the time has finally come to get pumped up with some rough and tumble football games LJN style. We're going to start off with a warm up in the form of two portable powerhouses, NFL Quarterback Club 1 and 2. But enough chattering, let's do this football rah! Released in November 1993, this Game Boy title from Beam Software was the initial entry in the long-running Quarterback Club series. This handheld heavyweight is fairly paltry when it comes to features. The sole available option is the Quarterback Challenge, a string of events that gauge the skills of athletes such as John Elway, Troy Aikman, and Randall Cunningham. The events can be tackled individually or in a tournament setting. Being that this is a Quarterback Challenge, most of the events test their throwing capabilities. The controls for the majority of the competition reminds me of NES Golf, as there's a meter on the bottom that manipulates the direction of the toss and how strong it will be, which is determined by pressing the A button twice at the right spot on the bar. If it wasn't obvious already, I sucked at this. I sucked hardcore. I was barely able to hit the targets, and when I did, the points rewarded were slim. The speed and mobility section was a refreshing change of pace, as the action switches to a side-scrolling perspective and we have to clear an obstacle course without receiving too many penalties. Not surprisingly, this was a Herculean feat beyond my laughable talents. I kept going where I wasn't supposed to, getting countless fouls in the process. The tournament mode increased my embarrassment by accompanying my failure with an announcement that flat out lied to my face. Tremendous job, huh? Do you call this tremendous? I didn't think so. To summarize this beam effort, it's pretty meh overall. There's not enough variety and it's too short, so I'd suggest passing on this. If there's one thing that was notably absent from the original quarterback club, it's the ability to participate in an actual match. And this is where the sequel enters the picture. Quarterback Club 2 came out in March 1995. Beam was benched from development duties and Condor was enlisted to take the reins. The second installment in the franchise wastes no time in satisfying football fans' needs. Just pick the teams, set the match options, flip a coin, and we're immediately brought to the field. I don't know much about football, but this seems to capture the spirit of the sport, although it's lacking in the presentation department. Maybe my standards are too high, but the graphics and audio are quite primitive for the era. The almost complete absence of music gives it an Atari 2600 vibe, which isn't bad per se, but it makes it feel energyless and empty. The visuals are merely a step up from Atari quality too, as the sprites are bland and lacking in detail. The sequel tried to surpass the original, but it's ultimately on the same level. Both of them combined would probably result in a decent NFL title, but separately, they're one-dimensional and kind of boring. These portable powerhouses turned out to be puny chumps, but LJN had more to offer for fans of the sport. The company also published NFL for the NES, which is one of the first games to officially bear the license. Is this older 8-bit title worthy of the mantle? Let's find out. Released in September 1989, the Atlas-produced NFL literally kicks onto the NES with an impressive cutscene. The soundtrack from Friday the 13th composer Hirohiko Takayama blasts from the speakers soon after, and the menu pops up showing that one or two people can play simultaneously. Sweet! As mentioned previously, this was officially sanctioned by the NFL, so the roster is comprised of the legit teams placed in their respective divisions. Selecting the teams and beginning a session reveals that this isn't any more advanced than its compact successor. Yes, it's in color, but the graphics are equally dull and the interface is worse! Choosing plays was simple in the portable sequel. The menu was clearly labeled with names and maneuvers. This has nothing but an illustration of the controller. 
That's it. This is a joke, and I suspect that even gridiron enthusiasts wouldn't find this enjoyable. Stick with Tecmo Bowl, and you'll be much better off. Even Hirohiko Takayama can't save this. Well, that was certainly disappointing. It's looking like LJN and sports just don't mix. Fortunately, the rainbow has one more chance to redeem themselves. NFL Quarterback Club for the Super Nintendo. The 16-bit version came out in December 1994 and was programmed by Iguana Entertainment. Iguana was responsible for the ports of NBA Jam, which explains why this is leagues ahead of the rest. The Super Nintendo version meshes together the formulas of its predecessors and improves upon them with a third simulation mode as the cherry on top. The speed and mobility segment of the QB challenge has a defined trail that has to be followed and the accuracy and recognition sections have an aiming crosshair, making it somewhat easier. I still sucked of course, but my performance increased a little due to these upgrades. Speaking of upgrades, the presentation received a huge boost. The sprites are vibrant and well animated and the inclusion the of voice samples from the ref adds authenticity to the overall experience. Red, 33. Blue. <laughs> Plus, it has this. That's the ball game. That dance is just amazing. To quote a famous expression, Iguana, you are winner. Iguana takes the prize and the SNES dominated its 8-bit competition to be crowned the king of the LJN football games. The odds were against them, but they delivered upon the premise and exceeded it. I would definitely recommend this for sports fans looking to build their collections. Box copies can be picked up for around 10 bucks, so it's cheap. Plus, do you really need more convincing than this? Anyway, I'm done talking about sports for a while. Come back next week for a Cygnus review that'll take us to a galaxy far, far away. But until then, this is Matt, the LJN Defender, signing out. Thanks for watching everyone, like I said before, come back next week for another Cygnus review, but until then, you can watch these videos on the screen right now. On the upper left hand corner, that is the Cygnus story video on the Doctor Who ROM hack for the NES from Pack and Sack Dave. That is really cool, he did that based on a, an old Famicom game called Cosmopolis Galavan. It's, yeah, it's like a Metroid-esque kind of platformer, so I think it's a really cool game. And uh, you should check it out, I think you'll like the video. It's shorter, but I think you'll like it. Now in the upper right hand corner, to get you in the mood, how about the playlist last year of the Wisdom Tree Bible games? I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do one of those this year. I thought I was going to do one, but I'm actually working on a different IEPG, so I'm not sure. One that will require much more time. In fact, I've been capturing footage for it since November, so that, in early November at that, so that tells you something. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be able to work on a new one of those this year, but you can watch those ones, the ones from 2014, to get you in the festive spirit and all that Christmas spirit so holiday spirit so yeah check that out on um, the bottom left hand corner I figured this one I'd put because it's the closest thing to uh, sports games that I've covered besides this how about this is the NES the WWF NES games for LJ and Defender so check that out Mad Matt Mad Matt sporting the beard like I do right now so yeah cool times good stuff yeah and as always, for anyone who's new to the channel, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, click that red box right there to subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to keep up to date with all of my current content. So come back next week for a new Cygnus review, but until then, I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!